presence and fill in the building. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. I believe this is the day that somebody's life is going to turn around. I believe this is the day that families are going to start working and going towards you, Lord. I believe, Lord God, that you're going to make turnarounds in lives like we've never seen before. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm always amazed that the presence of God that moves in this building when we start worshiping. Hallelujah. People say, well, Pastor, I've had them tell me I, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to feeling the goosebumps. I'm not used to feeling like I might want to cry. I'm not used to feeling like I might want to smile. Uh, that's the presence of God. And he will do things in your life. And you will Hold on the kids that any, any kid from uh, two three to 18, come on down. I want the Sunday school teachers to come down too. I'm gonna have Sister Nadia, who is our Sunday school superintendent. I'm gonna have her, before we pray for the kids, I'm gonna have her uh, tell us who the teachers are and then that they teach our kids. Both of our people that handle the youth on Wednesday night are out this morning. We got a ton of sickness. We got like four in the hospital right now. Uh, it's it's one of them deals. But we're so glad for the kids that are here. We want to pray. We want to pray. All the kids, come on down. Y'all come down. We want to pray for y'all. And uh, just come on down. And we got some treats for y'all as soon as this is over. We want parents let your kids go, uh, go to the back with the Sunday school teachers. They're going to, uh, we've got free ice cream. They're going to have a little party. They're going to get some ice cream. And hopefully it won't mess up their dinner and all that kind of stuff. But Sister Needy, if you would, tell us, introduce the teachers that are here and what age groups they handle. Needy is the head of our Sunday school department. And we're so happy to be here this morning. And uh, a couple of notes, our Sunday School Department is growing, and we are excited about that. We, um, if any of you feel called to help us in Sunday School, please see me and Brother Don. We would love to put you to work. Yes. So um, I'm going to start from the younger ones. We have Sister Selena. Wave your hand. You can just wave your hand. You don't have to. She teaches um, a range of age from five to nine. Um, and that is because we are praying for a younger teacher. For, not younger teacher, but a little, you know, for the little kids. <laughs> Sunday school teacher. And guess what? 
At the age of 15, I started teaching Sunday school and have never stopped since then, and I'm 48 years old. So God can call you at a young age. And I believe and I pray that the Lord is going to use every one of these children for His kingdom. All right. All right. I want our, uh, I want our ministry team, kids, I want y'all to kind of just bunch together right here in the middle. Uh, I want our ministry team to come first. If you're on the ministry team, come down here. We want you to pray. And then behind them, I want the parents and the grandparents. Whether you remember here or not, I, I want you to come down if you've got some kids here. I want you just to stand behind our behind them there and and, and just put your hands uh, to them. If you're a grandparent, if you're a parent, if you're an aunt, you're an uncle, uh, I want you to come on and and I, I believe that I believe that it takes a family to raise a kid. And uh, that's why I think this is so important today that that we pray as, as families over our children. Um, I read in the paper and I hear on the news, I watch on TV that we've got shootings in our school. It's not guns that kill, it's people that kill. Amen. And we have to pray protection over our children from crazy people, all right? And uh, so I just want us all to pray as, as a church family, as families, over these children today, that God will be with them this year, protect them, and not only that, but they will learn something this year, and that they will make good grades. All right? Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, you see this great group of children. Lord God, I ask you to let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on these children, Lord God, that you would keep an angel with protection around them. Lord God, that you would have an a hedge of protection around these children that nothing could hurt them. Lord God, that not a crazy could hurt them. Lord God, that there's nothing, Lord God, that's going to sidetrack them, that you're going to keep your hand on them. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that this year, that they make better grades than they've ever made before. Lord God, that they do good in, in school, they do good in their sports. Lord God, I pray that you would be with them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would Keep them in the palm of your hand, your word says. Lord God, we pray protection. We pray, Lord God, that you would be with them. Lord God, that no sickness will overcome them, that nothing will harm them. Lord God, that they're going to be victorious this year. They're going to have an awesome year. We pray protection, Lord. We pray blessings. Lord, I pray a blessing on every one of the family members here. That you would bless their finances. Lord God, that you would bless their marriages. You would bless their unions, Lord God, that you would bless them as a person and you let opportunity come in their life, Lord God, so that it will trickle down and filter into the parents, into the children, Lord God, the blessings of God. Protect them. Keep your hand on them, Lord. Lord God, I believe this is very important to pray over these children, and I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, bless them this year in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let's give God a hand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All the children that can go in the back with the Sunday school teachers, they have got ice cream. I promise if they're not hyper, they will be in just a little bit. We've got a lot of it. Just follow the, the three Sunday school teachers to the back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 To all of our guests that came to have your children or grandchildren bring them today, we thank you for doing that. I want to give y'all a hand clap. So thank you enough about the children and grandchildren. Thank you, Lord. Now, I understand that you got to listen to me while they're eating ice cream, so I'll try to make sure that I keep up a little bit of your attention so that it won't be as good as ice cream, but you can think about that. The that you're going to eat in a little bit or that. 
cockroach that you might have cooking a little stuff, or maybe a ribeye, or something. Maybe some deer meat. I don't know what you got cooking, but whatever you got cooking. I hope to I hope to not keep you long so to let you be able to enjoy your time with your family. Don't forget to we have another service. It's a different service. It's a different mass. It'll be here at six o'clock tonight. Uh, today's our laid back service. Uh, we get a little crazy on Sunday night. Uh, we 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 pump up the worship a little bit more. So uh, I always tell that to people. They say, so it's totally different. I say, it's totally different. So, so come check it out. You'll like it. And uh, But we're so glad that you're with us. And, and uh, to anybody that's just visited, uh, our goal and our dream would be that you don't just call yourself a visitor, but you come back next week and get involved. Uh, we'd love to have you back next service, next week, anytime. And... Uh, like Sister Nidia said, we do try to use people around here. So if you've been going and you ain't been being used and you want to do something, please see me and we'll definitely get you doing something. Uh, we've got a food bank that we take care of over 2,200 people a month right now in our other building. And um, we have lots of room to have people work. Uh, we, we need, we've got readers that we need. We've got Sunday school teachers we need. And we just believe that we can use you doing something around here. And uh, so we like to say that if you get involved, you'll stay. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of places make you sit on the pew for a while. I, don't, I think that everybody ought to be involved in God's kingdom. Because we're all God's children. So I'm going to preach for the next few minutes. This is part two. I started a series last week. Uh, the series is, it's time to believe anything is possible. It's time to believe anything is possible. Part two of that is, I'm going to be preaching today that you're in a new season of increase. Things are shifting in your favor. I feel like prophetically that we're in a new season of increase and things are shifting in your favor. And I hope to preach about that for the next few minutes. I hope not to bore you. Uh, some of the advertising that I put out on the church is that we don't have boring preaching. Uh, somebody called me that they said, hey, I seen you had a little ad out that you could drink coffee in the sanctuary and, and listen to good music and your preaching ain't boring. I said, well, I promise it won't be. I got too much Boudreaux in me. And uh, so I'm gonna say something to make you laugh somewhere. And so it's not gonna be boring. If it is, I'll work on it next time. So if you have your Bibles, turn me to Psalms 31, Psalms 31. 14 and 15. I'm in the King James Version for this reading. Psalms 31, 14 and 15. But I trust in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Many times are in thy hand. Deliver me from my hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. What David is saying here, I've got some enemies in my life. I got some problems, but I want you to deliver me from them. I believe there's some people in here that need to be delivered from some stuff. You've got some financial problems. You've got some addiction problems. You've got some marriage problems. You've got some sickness problems. Just like David, you want God to step in and deliver you. Turn with me to Psalms 102, one verse of Scripture. Psalms 102, verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time of favor, of the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. And I, when I read the Bible, I'm a little different than most people. I don't read Zion. You know what I read? Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Don. For the time of his favor, the set time is come. I, I turn that Bible to be for me. I don't know about you, but I believe whatever's in the word I can have. Every promise, every chapter is for me. It's not for somebody else. Then I want you to turn me to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. And verses 11 through 13. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Very familiar reading the scripture again in the King James. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected end. So what he said here is, I've got thoughts that I'm bringing you out of whatever it is you're in. 
Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Two more scriptures in Luke. Luke 4, 18 through 19, again in the King James Version. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Jesus takes the Bible, turns over to Isaiah, and he starts to read, and this is in red, if you have a red letter edition. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I want to preach for the next few minutes about there's a new season of increase coming in your life. Things are shifting in your favor. And I believe that you got a new season coming. You might not believe it yet, but if you just hold on, I think I can give you enough scripture in the next few minutes to believe that you've got a new season coming. Let's pray and ask God to help me and ask you to understand and apply the word today to your life. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. Lord God, I ask you, let me be your microphone, your mouthpiece. Let me say, thus saith the Lord. Lord God, I also ask you to open up everyone's mind in the building. Let their mind open up. Let understanding flow in right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, I believe that you are going to bring us into a new season, not only as a church, but individually. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. I feel like you are starting a new season in your life today. If all you can believe it, you will receive it. But to start to walk in a new season, you have to get up and walk out of your old season. You see, the reason we never start our new season in our lives is we can never see ourselves coming out of the rut that we are in. A rut is nothing more than a low place we find ourselves in, that the enemy has lured us in. When we get stuck in a rut, we have a hard time getting out because it is the low of the low. It's a place where you can easily walk out of. But because of discouragement, you are disillusioned, you are sick. Some of you are just sick and tired, but not enough to believe you can come out of that place into a new season that God wants to lead you into. If you don't expect things to change, you never grow. You don't look for a way out of the rut into a new season because you just don't believe it can happen. That's when negative thoughts take over your mind, telling you that you've reached your limits and you will never accomplish your goals or live in a new season. You see, in your mind, it's all downhill from here, but I came to tell somebody this morning, never ever believe those lies. God's still a God of increase. God's still a God of healing. God's still a God of new seasons. And in my spirit today, God is saying that we're entering a new season today. There's not one coming, but we are entering it today. A new season, but you have to receive it to believe it. And if you can believe it, God's going to bring you out. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about there's a new season coming in your life. I I normally tell a Boudreaux joke about right now, but I, I didn't come up with one, so you'll have to forgive me that we talk about what I want to talk about. But, but I do have something that's probably more interesting than a Boudreaux joke. I, I want to tell you about this man, this man named Tyler. This man named Tyler, he, he was born in New Orleans. And uh, Tyler, Tyler was born into a dysfunctional family. Tyler was born into a family that had nothing. Tyler was born into a poor, poor family. Uh, Tyler was born into a family that had a lot of abuse. He was abused as a kid. He, he, he was so abused that somewhere in his early teens, Tyler ran away from his family. And he didn't just run away, but he ran away to Atlanta, Georgia. That's a long way from New Orleans, uh, that's, that's like a long, long way. And he ended up on the streets and he was homeless. And Tyler was homeless 
until he was a little around the age of 28 years old. Tyler had a bad life, but in the back of Tyler's mind, he always knew that he could come out of whatever it was that he was in. In the back of his mind, he had went to church as a little kid. Uh, even though his family was abusive, there was a school bus that came around and picked people up to go to Sunday school. And that's another reason that we're praying on the kids today. Because sometimes parents and grandparents, uh, we get sidetracked. And, and we quit doing the things that we need to do to put some stuff into our kids' life to get them to know that God has got their back no matter what they're going through. Whenever they do, get to the age and have to do that. And, and so Tyler, Tyler found himself homeless to the age of 28, but he, he kept on the thought process that, you know what, things can change in my life. And, and he just believed it. And so he started to write a journal. And, and he would write the journal, but, but he was living in a homeless shelter. And he didn't want no one to know that he was writing about himself. Or are we not that way? We, we dress up real pretty for Sunday morning, but, but, but we know, or, or when we go to work, we, we put on our best smile, but there's still some turmoil going on in our lives. There, there's still some problems that we're dealing with, and, and we really can't see our way out. And this is where Tyler was, except for that little voice in the back of his mind that said, I can be whatever I desire to be because God has an expected end, as I read for you in the scripture. He believed that. But, but life wasn't being nice. He was homeless. He had nothing. He had to worry about where he was going to get his next uh, uh, meal and was it going to be hot or you know, or is he just going to have to dig in the dumpster? He said that, that he was a dumpster diver. And, and he would dive in the dumpster to try to get some. I hope that none of us are right there. But you know what? We're really dumpster divers in our own way because we're living way below our privilege. We're, we're living way below where God has us because we've had some issues in our life. And those issues has caused us to believe that we can't have a new season. You see, we get in that rut that we just can't seem to get out of. The rut that we go to the job, but it's not really paying the bills. But we don't try to get a new job because at least we got something coming in. Or, you know, my, my marriage is not real good, but I'm not really going to work on it because I don't know if it would help. I, I have a lot of people come sit behind that black door with me. And they tell me their problems. They say, I'm addicted, Pastor, but... I, I, I'm not going to try to get out of it. I'm just going to try to keep doing it uh, because I just don't think I can beat the habit. You know, there's a lot of church people sitting on pews that's addicted. Now, they'll tell you they're not. But instead of taking one of, of their medicines, they take four or five at night at, at whenever they're not supposed to just to go to bed. But that's not addiction because I get it from the doctor. I'm telling you right now, if you're addicted to something and you got to have it, that's not God's will. He wants you broke out of that. It doesn't matter if you're addicted to, to marijuana, you're addicted to cocaine, to meth. God wants you broke off. God wants you also healthy financially. God didn't put you on this earth so that you had to be a beggar. The scripture does say that the poor will be with you always. But it says that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You see, if you're following after God, God wants to bless you. He might not have done it yet, but it's coming. But you've got to decide, I can get out of my rut. I don't have to live here. I don't have to live here homeless is what Tyler thought. Tyler said, I can come out of this. I can make a way for it. You see, he decided he could get out of his rut. And let me just tell you what a rut is. A rut is a grave with both ends busted out. You are sitting in a grave that you dug. You might have caused it. Other people might have caused it. But they already had the ends knocked out. All you got to do is believe that you can walk out of it. And if you get that sense, you can walk out. God's going to be there. And he's going to help you walk out of it. I come to tell somebody today that there's a new season coming. And you can say, you know what? That preacher's crazy. There's no way I can have a new season. And you can stay in your rut. Or you can say today, I will believe that. I'm going to get in that new season. I'm coming out. I'm coming out blessed and highly favored. I can have what the Word of God says I can have. The problem with people in America is that we don't believe
believe anymore. We don't believe nothing other than what we might hear on TV. We need to start cutting out the negativity and cut up some Jesus. We need to decide that the Word of God is for me and my family. I can be blessed. I can be highly favored. But if you will decide today that there's a new season, not coming, but it's here today. Amen. There's a change coming in your life. The problem is, is we never buy in. And we just stay in that rut. And we just walk back and forth in that rut. And that rut gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And we can't figure out how to get out of it. Well, pastor, I'm trying. I'm really trying. But you see, you got to decide that God will bring you out of the rut. Let, let me help you just a little bit before I tell you the rest about Tyler. You see, the Israelites found themselves exactly where you find yourself this morning. Whether you go to church all the time, whether you're a one time a week, or whether you're a one time a month, or a one time a year, or one time every five years, you find yourself exactly where the Israelites found themselves. They, they had just come out of Egypt. They got out of Egypt, and they were told to go to the promised land. They got right up, look, God brought them through the Red Sea. Now, that was a big place. That was a big thing. And, and we all hear, read the story. We all sing songs about it. We say, yeah, he, he, he popped back them waves and, and dried it all up. And some say he built a highway right through it. I don't know. I wasn't there. But the Bible says it was dry anyway. So I don't know if he poured concrete, Brother Jimmy, or, or, or if he just dried it up enough for him to get on through. I don't know if their, their buggy started spinning sometimes or, or it was totally dry. I don't know all that. But I know they went through the Red Sea. But then they get up to the little bitty Jordan River. And God says, right on that side, I already brought you through this big old huge sea. Is your promised land. The land is flowing with milk and honey. You're going to have all these great things in your life. It's a new season. And 12 spies go out. 10 come back and oh my God. You'd have thought they had CNN on. Oh man, they told how bad it was. They didn't listen to Fox at all. Even though, I just tell you straight up, Fox is getting bad as CNN lately. That's just my personal opinion. But anyway, uh, but, 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 but you thought they were CNNers, and all they told was how bad it was. How this ain't going to be good, and that ain't going to be good. And my God, they got giants in the land. But you see, God had already spoken, I got a new season for you. Today, God is speaking to some of you, there's a new season starting in your life today. You can decide to stay on this side of the river, or you can decide to go ahead and cross over. Let me tell you what happens if you cross over. If you cross over, every promise in that book, every chapter, every line is for you. God's going to keep his blessing on you. All of a sudden, you're going to wake up one morning, and you're going to have your finances fixed. Some of you are sick in your body, your body's going to be healed. Some of you got marriage problems, your marriage is going to be fixed. Some of you got issues in your life, addictions that you can't seem to shake. You're going to wake up in a few days because you took that step of faith and said, I believe what he's saying, that I can have a new season. And when you grab a hold of that, you're going to start to break off some of that stuff in your life. And you're going to walk in a new season. And all of a sudden, God's going to be there. And he's going to say, come on. Come on, let me help you with that. I, I'm going to give you a little extra right now. I'm going to bless you just a little bit more. I'm going to heal that stage for cancer. I, I'm bringing you out. And, and I'm going to heal the diabetes. And I'm going to heal the sugar problem. And I'm going to heal the high blood pressure. You see, we get all nervous about that stuff. But if we can get it, God can heal it. He said, by his stripes, he were healed. In Peter, that means it's already happened. But you got to believe it by faith today. Just like I'm preaching about a new season, you got to believe you can come out of your rut. So, so the Israelites, since 10 out of 12, said, no, it's scary over there. Hey, it's scary to walk into a new season. You know why? Because you're okay in the rut. You don't like the rut. You don't like right where you're at. But you know what? You're used to it. You're used to always getting told by the boss, I'm passing over you today. You're, you're, you're used to being, being told, you know what? 
you just don't add up. You know, uh, you ain't never been good. Your daddy wasn't good. Your mama wasn't good. You ain't never going to be good. You're used to that. And because of that, you have a hard time buying in to a new season. But God sent me today to tell you that new season is starting today if you can buy in. If you can say, I believe today, he's going to bring you out of that rut. And instead of worrying about crossing this little bit of river, he just brought you through the sea. He has protected you up to now. He has blessed you up to now. Yeah, it might have been hard, but, but he has helped you through some stuff. Has anybody here never been helped by God? If you've never been helped by God, let me see you. God ain't never helped you. There ain't no hands up in the building. You see, God has helped you with something. If he's ever helped you before, he's going to help you again. Because this is God. So let me help you. So two million Israelites who had the promise had to walk around in their rut. They had to walk around in the wilderness for 40 years because they never believed a new season was coming. I'm challenging somebody today. There's a new season in your life. I don't care your age. I don't care your relationship with God. There's a new season that's about to happen. And if you can grab a hold of it and say it's for me, you're going to cross over that little river and all of a sudden there's going to be a life change and things happen in your life. You're coming out. You're going to be blessed and highly favored. And, and there's some increase coming. There's some financial increase coming. You said, you said, well, Pastor, all that, all that, all that prosperity gospel. What, what is that all about? I want to tell you straight up. If, if you don't believe God will do it, it ain't going to happen if you can't believe it. But if you start speaking it, declaring it, saying, I can have that, all of a sudden God is going to open up the windows of heaven and he said, I'm going to pour you out a blessing that you can't even contain. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to help you. But two million people died in the wilderness because they couldn't buy in to the blessings of God. He brought them through the Red Sea. But the little bitty river messed them up. So I want to take you to one other little story. And, 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 and give you a little bit of, uh, of help with that. This guy named Tyler. This guy named Tyler started to write down. And because he lived in the homeless shelter, I told you a minute ago, he started to change the names of the events in his journal. He would put somebody else's name. He made up fictitious characters. A few, a few years later, he used that journal to start to write books, to start to write plays, to start to write movies. And his name was Tyler Perry. He was 28 and he was homeless. No family, been in an abusive situation. I'm trying to help somebody that you say, well, that works for everybody else other than me. Are you living underneath the bridge? Because that's where he was living. Or, or, or is your family totally against you and they beat you and you never wanted to talk to them again? And, and, and were you there? I don't know if he was or not. But, but even if he was, Tyler was there and he was in the worst position. But 20 years later, he's only 48 years old. I want to help somebody right now. He's only 48. He was born in September of, of, of 68. And uh, he's 48 years old. I come to tell somebody right now that I don't care how bad your situation is. If you can buy the word of God this morning, that a new season is coming for you and your family. There is a major turnaround coming. And I don't care how bad it is, it's about to be good. And your future is so bright, you're going to have to start wearing shades. You have to believe the Word of God. The problem is we just have a hard time believing something we haven't received. You know, I, I didn't have this in the notes. But I've went, I, I think, 11 times. To the mission field. And I just want to tell this. I don't know why I'm going to tell it, but it just hit me. First time I ever went, I went because a man that I was very familiar with, it was a good friend of mine, Reverend George Guy, he's a prophet, asked me to go. 
And, and I went, and the first trip I went to, I think, was in 2000. And, and I went, and uh, I was just there to help him. I was not a preacher. You see, I'd been backslidden. I'd quit preaching. I'd, I quit doing stuff. And I was going to church, but but I wasn't moving in my gifts. I was, You know, I put my gifts in my ministry on the shelf. You ever been there where, where you started going toward God and then something sidetracked you? You know, when we start letting stuff in our life, we get sidetracked. That's why the Israelites couldn't cross the little river. They crossed the great sea, but we let the things that we allow in sidetrack us. I had got there. Um, our motto here at Christian Life Church is we're a church of imperfect people serving a perfect God. And somebody asked me a while back, why do you say that? I said, because I'm the most repentant preacher you ever met. I said, I, I repent 30 or 40 times a day because I have to. Now, some of y'all are so good that you don't ever have to repent. But, but you know what? I understand that I'm all 100% doing it. And, and I can just act crazy sometimes. And so I'm okay with that, though. You see, you got to get okay with your walk with God and just say, God, here I am. Use me, do whatever you can do. But anyway, I get over there. I get over there, and, and, he, and I'm there to hold his Bible. That's all I'm there for. I'm there to hold his Bible. I'm there to open the door. I, I mean, I respect this guy. He's important. And so uh, uh, it comes time to pray for the people the first time. And we've got, we've got a crowd of over 10,000 there. And he says, I want all my ministry team to come up in the front like our ministry team was doing today. And he said, if you want to receive Jesus Christ, I want you on this side. If you want a healing, I want you on this side. The, the crowd divided up. He was talking to an interpreter. And uh, I'm sitting I'm sitting about where Shelby is. And, and I ain't moved. Hey, I'm his final total. I ain't nothing. All these other guys are preachers. But you see, he knew where I'd come from. And he said, you know what? It's time that you decide that there's a new season in your life. And, and, and he said, Don Steyer, in front of 10,000 plus people, Don Steyer, stand up. I'm like looking at him, like shaking my head. I, I know they don't know who I am because they're talking in a different language. So I'm okay, except for these guys up here that know me. And I'm like, no, no, no. He said, I need you right over here praying for people. Well, he had to tell me like three times before I got up. You know why? You know what run through my mind? The same things run through your mind right now about your new season. Well, God, you know where I really am. God, you know all my situation. You know how many times I ain't served you when I knew better. You know all the times I messed up. God, you, you, you know, God, I, that ain't me. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to sit here and do nothing. But you see, he knew that in 2018, I was going to be preaching to a bunch of people about a new season. And I had to learn how to walk in a new season before I could tell you about a new season. And so I'm sitting there, and, and, and I get up out of total respect for the man. And I come down there. And you see, I had prayed for people before. I grew up in church all my life. I laid my hands on them and prayed for them. But you know what? I, I don't think that anything really happened until that night. And, and, and all of a sudden, I'm over here. And, and he puts me on the side to be healed. I'm thinking, my God, I can't do that. Why don't you put me over here and want to receive Jesus? I, I'm good at that. But I'm not good at praying for nobody for no healing. You got the wrong one. And all of a sudden, I get over here. And, and he said, all I want you to do is say Jesus. And he's telling me this in front of 10,000 people on the microphone. Why couldn't he whisper in my ear? I'm serious. I'm outspoken and I'm outgoing, but I was a little nervous. And, and Philip's brother, John, was with me. And so, and so I said, okay. So he gave the instruction, the interpreter gave it, and I got to the first person, and I got all spiritual. I went to say in the name of Jesus, I'm going to try to be all whatever. And I said in Jesus' name, and I touched the first one on the head. And when I did, and I don't want to scare all you visitors that, that you ain't used to this stuff, but when I touched the first one, they hit the floor. I'm not talking about like catching itself, 
you know, got one eye open going. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Benny Hinn. Pow! I used to think Benny was nuts till right then. I looked at the person. I thought I did something to him. I've been in church all my life. I'm going, what did I just do? Serious. You, you got one half of you spiritual, the other half of you just as human as, as human can be. Amen. Don't act like it ain't, because you're all the same way. And I go, oh, Jesus. Brother Joseph, did I kill him? I don't know. So, so I took the next step and I said, in Jesus' name, the next one, pow, hit the floor. Oh, mm -mm, that ain't me. I, mm -mm, no, Lord, you stop that. I mean, I'm nervous. You know why? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to cross a little river, but but he's already brought me uh, down to another country. But, but I ain't even thinking about that. So to pray for people that I don't even know. I'm going, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, you know I, I'm not worthy to even be praying for nobody. I, I'm, I'm not. Uh -uh. And then an hour later, it wasn't one I prayed for in the whole room that was standing up. And I finally get to the back, and I sit down, and, and, and I'm just talking to God. I said, God, how could you use me? He said, because you took the step. God, how can you? God, I'm nothing. How could you use me? He said, because I got to use somebody. And I used the donkey one time. God, how? How could you use me? I'm speaking to somebody right now. God is speaking to you so heavily right now. Come on. God's asking you to step up out of that rut. That you've been in for several years. He's calling you this morning. He's telling you if you can take the step. I'm going to make a new season like you don't even know coming. The whole week there. Everybody I prayed for. I seen people get a healing. I, I seen some. I seen a blind guy. I'm nothing y'all. I seen a blind guy that all he had was whites in his eyes. No ball, eyeball, no pupil. And whenever I said in Jesus' name, he went to screaming and hollering. I thought I heard him. He jumped up off the floor. He ran all over the place. He wouldn't leave me alone. He kept grabbing me on my pants. I couldn't understand him. And, and he kept pointing at his eyes. Hollering, look, 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 look. Some of the ladies, I didn't know. He had pupils all of a sudden. I'm not nobody. I'm just a regular old guy just telling you what Jesus will do. says, I want out of the Amen. God will start to bless your footsteps. He says he keeps us in the palm of our hand. But all I can think about is, man, guess what I've done? Guess where I've been? God, I'm not even worthy to be with these guys. You know, they're, they're preachers. They're important. You ever thought about that? And let me tell y'all what. We put our boots and our pants on just like you do. The only difference is we believe that God can use a donkey. He can use us. Amen. So here I go. I show up in Benton. Nine people. God said, I'm going to do a work in Benton, son. I'm just crazy enough now to see I've done cross that river. I'm just crazy enough now to believe that I can have anything that God says I can have. I come to challenge somebody today. You're walking into a new season. God has used you in the past. He is ready to use you again. You have felt the tug of God on your life. He wants to tug you again. All you got to do is say, you know what? I'm showing up for the cause. I, I'm going to cross over. And if all I get is a grape, instead of the big cluster of grapes they got over there, I'm happy with one grape. But you know what? I believe whenever you take the step of faith today and you step apart, all of a sudden God's going to bless your life and you're going to get a Tyler of uh, uh, Perry blessing. God's just not going to leave you homeless, but today he has a 12-acre estate in the land of Georgia. And y'all know he's got movies out and he's one of the, the richest producers around. 
It only happened in 20 years. What is your next 20 years going to be like? Are you going to take that step and say, I'm coming out of this rut, and I'm going to go ahead and believe I'm walking into a new season, a new season without addiction, a new season of increase? Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody today that you've been in a rut of financial problems, of marriage problems, but God's ready to bless you. God's ready to bring you out. God's ready to heal you because God never, I'm going to give you a line right now, and this is a fact, God never gives up on us. You know who gives up? We do. God knows exactly where you are right now. I want to close with a set of scriptures as Michelle starts to play. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. To everything is a season. And a time to ever purpose under heaven. A time to be born. Time to die. Time to plant. Time to pluck up that which is planted. Time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn. Brother Jimmy reminded your conversation a little while ago. There's a time to dance. Amen. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones together. Time to embrace. Time to refrain from embracing. Time to get. Time to lose. A time to keep. A time to cast away. A time to rent. Time to sow. A time to keep silent. A time to speak. A time of love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. Today is your time to take the promises of God that you can have a new season in your life. A new season of blessing, a new season of spirituality, a new season to say it's my time to start to follow God as a family. And even if your family don't come, it's a time for you to follow God for yourself. I want to challenge somebody today that God has spoken to. To not be, let this be the last time you walked in the door. But decide, you know what, I can cross that river. I can do ahead and go ahead and do what I need to do. I can kick. Besides, out of the coffin has held me back. And it's only a rut, then. And I can walk right out. And I don't have to stay addicted. And I don't have to stay mad. And I don't have to stay angry. But I can be blessed and highly favored. And you know what? As we prayed over those little kids today, what would happen to their lives? If you start to cover them in prayer every day, what would happen to your kids and your grandkids' life if you covered them in prayer every day? What happened if you prayed with them? What happened if you took them to church with you and said, you know what? I might not have been doing it like I should have done it, but from that day on, I'm going to take them to church with me. I I'm going to show them that there's something different because there's coming a day that they're going to need to know what to lean on you know the problem and the issues that you went through in your life. How would you have done it with knowing that God is there for you? You wouldn't have made it through. Please let the Spirit speak to you today. Buy in that you can have a new season. Buy in that you can have it start today. In Jesus' name. If you believe this message is for you, why don't you just raise your hands and tell God, that you're thankful that he talked to you one more time. Just say, God, right where you're at, I thank you that you've talked to me today. I thank you that you have touched my mind and my thoughts. And that inner voice inside is speaking. That's the Spirit of God. He cares about you today. And he wants you to follow him in a closer walk than you've been. And that your future is getting very bright. And you're about to move forward in a new thing. His Evacuation or proclamation for years has been for thousands of years come and follow me. If you'll just come.
come and follow Jesus today. Come as you are. You don't have to be any kind of way. All you got to do is come as you are. Because there's a time for everything. Ecclesiastes tells me. There's a time to serve God. If you would like special prayer, we're not going to throw nothing on you. You're not joining the church. But if you'd like somebody to pray with you about you taking the next step, our ministry team will be down here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for trusting us to pray over your children. We want to be your church. We want to be the, the church that reaches out to the city. We believe that God loves everybody. And we believe that God loves you. If anybody wants a special prayer for anything, if you'll come forward, the ministry team will pray for you. If not, I love you. We got service tonight at 6 o'clock. As Michelle sings, shake somebody's hand. We love you. Thank you for coming.